Om Shanti. 21st January 2019 Monday Today's blessing is May you be fearless and become victorious and attract everyone by imbibing the authority of truth. Your children are elevated, powerful souls with the power of truth. You have received true knowledge, the true father, true attainment, true remembrance, true virtues and true powers. When you have the intoxication of such great authority, this authority of truth will continue to attract every soul. Even in the land of falsehood, jhut khand, those who have the power of truth are victorious. The attainment of truth is happiness and fearlessness. Those who speak the truth are fearless. They can never have any fear. So Baba is saying to become fearless and to attain happiness by speaking the truth. You are most elevated and you are most powerful because you have the power of truth. And when you have such intoxication, this authority of truth will attract every soul. Even in this land which is full of falsehood, those who have the power of truth are victorious. Mahatma Gandhi has said somewhere, I don't know whether God is truth or not, but I am sure that truth is God. So he said, God, truth itself is God. And to follow the truth is not a very small thing. Baba says, you have got the highest of the knowledge. You have God, true father. You have got true father. You have got true attendance. You have got true remembrance. You have got true gyan, knowledge. You have got true virtues and you have got true powers. All the six things you have got and that's why you have the power of truth. You have the authority of truth. You know the true father. Nobody in the world is aware of who is God. The greatest confusion that was ever in the whole world is always about God. Thousands and thousands of scriptures are written. They say there are about 4,300 religions in the world. According to one statistics, there are 4,300 religions in the world. There must be many more than that. There are thousands and thousands of philosophies. If we make a chart of religion, it's very, very big. Eastern, Western. In Eastern, Vedic, non-Vedic. And then there are again further segregation further divisions. Some atheist, some 
theist some religions believing in god some religion not believing in god buddhism jainism not believing in god and some religions believing in god hinduism sikhism so if you go for that classification of religion it is very very big this is just any eastern religions then there are western religions semantic non semantic abrahamic non abrahamic so the classification is very big so there is a greatest confusion in the world about who is god what is god in today's sakar murli baba said i am incognito i entered this room in a very secret manner everything is hidden about me nobody can tell date and time tithi tarikh nothing can be told everything is gupt clandestine about me so god has ever been a conundrum a puzzle a enigma a mystery which nobody could ever crack solve now you know who is true father nobody in the world knows only you know he sits and he speaks he sits in front of you and he talks that's why you get the authority that's why you are so powerful that's why you are elevated because now you know the father true attainments whatever we achieve from him purity power peace happiness these are true attainments baba doesn't give us all those worldly things he gives us things of this things that satisfies the spirit he gives us the highest attainment highest treasures highest fortune such attainment such fortune we can never get from any human being it's only and only from one god that we achieve the highest then we have true remembrance in the world also people remember god but their remembrance do not reach him because they do not know him now this is something like that if somebody is staying in for example sri lanka and one man is sending money to another man who is in sri lanka now the man in sri lanka is not aware of who is sending the money okay suppose i am sitting in here and i am sending every month a specific amount of money to a person who is in sri lanka now he doesn't know me and then he thinks let me imagine any things or he starts worshiping a cockroach okay thinking that it is probably he is sending me now he doesn't know me and now it is his faith i am not saying his faith is wrong he can create anything so he has created a cockroach and he worships that cockroach that you send me every day this and he remembers that cockroach all the time so will his remembrance reach me probably not in the similar manner it's god who gives everything but people do not know who is giving them so they start worshiping stones animals snakes cows elements deities human beings gurus and everything and they say that our worship reaches him but nothing can reach him so we are the one who know the art of remembrance 
the true art of remembrance our remembrance is truth in today's murli baba said who told you to use the word yoga who told you use the word remembrance yaad simply remember me that's it in that logic also they remember their mother and father it is so easy it's not very difficult to remember mother and father by using the word yoga you are complicating the things don't use the word yoga simply use the word remembrance and this is remembrance also is a yatra is a pilgrimage this is the most beautiful word that has ever been used for meditation in world history so we have got true remembrance truth and then true gyan god is truth and the god the knowledge he gives is truth there is knowledge in bible there is knowledge in quran and there is knowledge in hindu scriptures and there is knowledge in uh, talmud and there is knowledge in dhammapad and there is knowledge in all the scriptures of the world but none of that knowledge is complete there are scattered knowledge few things are there few things are not there baba says what knowledge you are receiving this is true knowledge in today's sakar mudli baba said you are spiritual teachers each one of you each one of you is a spiritual teacher so you should understand this knowledge and explain it to others you should have this knowledge in your intellect and explain it to others so we have got this extremely new knowledge which was not there at all anywhere in the world before it's so new the depth of the nal knowledge is revealed much later but if you see the earlier part of the yagya history there was visions and divine visions everything like that they would hear just one word and they would go in trance they would listen to one line only this much that you are soul and they would get stabilized in the experience of soul so this is true knowledge which reveals the history and geography of the world this is a true knowledge encompassing almost each and every aspect of human life including every subtle part of psychology human psychology human nature human understanding human history human geography and predictions about future and this knowledge is given bit by bit it's not given at one go it is given in installment by installments gradual and whatever that were told in the earlier part that became true so there are predictions revelations in this knowledge there is tasks to be done there is awakening of the consciousness in today's sakar murli baba said you go everywhere and awaken everyone you should go everywhere there are two actually diametrically opposite statements at one said at one point baba said you need not to go anywhere sit at one place why you want to go anywhere but in another part of the murli baba said you should go everywhere awaken everyone so this is true gyan such gyan such knowledge is not there anywhere in the world though we had heard about spirituality and we had heard about virtues and we had heard about morality and religions and there were scriptures already in the world but in spite of all the scriptures in spite of all the religions in spite of all the written material still the world was falling down reaching the lowest point the abysmal depth of wickedness immorality corruption since 
materialism in spite of all that knowledge that's why a new knowledge was needed extremely new fangled knowledge so this knowledge is very new knowledge and this is a true knowledge the next true virtues we new virtues it's not that for the first time somebody is hearing about brahmacharya or somebody is hearing about truth or somebody is hearing about discipline or somebody is hearing about the different words baba has used but baba has included virtue as a subject in this university that you have to imbibe the virtues and it's for everyone not only few selected group in the path of sanyasa they have their two circles internal circle and external circle internal circle they teach some different things and external circle worldly people they teach different things because they know that it is not possible for worldly men women to imbibe understand inculcate understand those deeper things but here the same knowledge is for everyone there are five categories in this yagya if you draw a tree teachers kumaris and mothers and on other side kumars and other kumars these are five groups but all gyan is same for everyone it's not that for kumar this is there and for those other kumars half kumars this is there and for mother this is there and for teacher this is there it's the same for everyone it is same for everyone so true virtues and then true powers in the path of bhakti they talk about siddhis and their powers are very different sometimes they walk ahima garima mahima these are the different powers ashta siddhi eight powers they talk something will come in your hand and something you will dematerialize sanjeevni vidya somebody is dead and you make him alive and you walk on the water or you travel through air or clairvoyance and clairaudience so all these things are there in the path of bhakti baba doesn't give those powers because those siddhis were the cause of fall all the sadhus all the yogis all the sanyasis all the tapasvis all the great souls who attained those powers they got filled with ego that i can do miracles and through the hand that vibhuti is coming out and through the picture and photos you will feel those things are coming out and then he will materialize some ring and give to you so all this chamatkar all this miracles which were done in the world miracle mongering that actually was the cause of fall it cannot make anybody pure so baba doesn't give us those powers that you start walking on the air or all those things such powers are not there our powers are so subtle to tolerate is our power to accommodate this is our power to pack up to withdraw to decide to discern to cooperate these are our powers so the powers baba gives are very different so god is truth and he gives there's a true father and true attainments and true remembrance and true gyan and true virtues and true powers everything true about him and baba is saying those who speak truth what are they they are fearless why because though if you have to speak truth you don't have to remember anything if you have to speak untruth you have to revise it many times because you forget you know it's very difficult to speak untruth because you have to revise it you have to remember those points that i have to speak because which i have not seen or done but i have to give that untruth so untruth is little difficult and untruth has got long progeny in their compartments so many uh, truth is very simple untruth is complicated but there are three words one is truth satya 
another is untruth, asatya, and third is mithya. Now there are three words. What is mithya? Falsity, mithya char. What is the difference between untruth and mithya? Asatya and mithya. What is the difference? <laughs> yeah? Half truth is different. There is truth, there is untruth, and there is falsity. This is most dangerous. Mithya. Mithya means person is sick and he declares I am healthy. This is Mithya Char. Person is sick and he pronounces, he declares that I am healthy. Inside there is something else. Outside there is something else. This is known as Mithya Char. Inside there is untruth, but person says he is truth. So this is something in between these two, but this is most dangerous, mithyachar, falsity. So, those who speak truth, truth is simple, truth is uncomplicated, untruth is complicated, untruth you have to revise, untruth, if you forget, everything is, becomes difficult. You have to remember untruth statements. You have to practice untruth. Truth is simple. Because it remains the same. In the court of law, you go as a witness and you are told, tell what you saw. You say, I was sitting and somebody came and somebody killed somebody. Simple. But when you are told, no, you don't have to say this. You have to say that you were not sitting. When then where I was sitting? So I was not sitting here, I was where I was at the time of crime. So I was there. Then what I was doing? Then again untruth. So why I had gone there? Again untruth. Then what is my relation with this person? Again untruth. Huge web starts. I have to keep speaking untruth after untruth. Untruth after untruth. Untruths, falsehoods trade. There is one word, word falsehood. This is something very much near to untruth. So there is a truth, there is untruth, there is falsehood and there is mithyachar. These are different words. So, jhut khand Baba says. This is jhut. One is jhut, one is mithya, one is asatya, one is satya. Now they have become four. <laughs> Things are becoming complicated. <laughs> but, they have got all some relation with each other. So, if you speak truth, what are the benefits? Fearless. Happiness. If you use truth, simple. Hmm? Worldliness. Then, if you speak truth, then? No fear. You are so fearless. And you, your statement remains the same. Uh, one philosopher, Oscar Wilde, has said somewhere that... Uh, Lies, big lies, they don't shock men. We are never shocked by listening to big lies. We are accustomed to them. But slightest truth shocks us. Slightest truth makes us uncomfortable. But big, big lies, we are very comfortable with lies. We are very comfortable, we enjoy those. We never get shocked. Like this it has happened, only this much. But truths, they are bitter. They hurt. So, unpalatable. Truths are unpalatable. While lies we accept. So, God is truth. Satya vratam trisatyam satyasya yonim nihitam cha satya. He is the ultimate truth. He comes to establish the truth. And nothing surpasses him in truth. He is the full truth, the complete truth, the highest truth. In the court of law they say, I will speak the truth, the whole truth and the complete truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> there is a joke. Once a dentist, dentist, tooth doctor, he was called to the court of law and he was told to take the oath, he said, I will tell the truth, <laughs> the complete truth, 
the final tooth and nothing but the tooth. So Baba is telling us to become true, truthful. Truth is very much connected to honesty. Okay. So truth will make you free. I am the truth of life, God says. So those who speak the truth are fearless and they can never have any fear. Even in the land of falsehood, those who have the power of truth are victorious and you will be victorious. The attainment of truth is happiness and fearlessness. Om Shanti.